let's move on to traditional examples of food preparation and preservation techniques. These techniques may be used separately or in combination. In agricultural evolution resulted in a surplus of crops after harvesting and farmers had to store them with minimal loss. They had to avoid pests and spoilage. Grain and pulses, pulse crops are usually sun-dried and stored in cubes that are small warehouses. Some natural pest repellents can be mixed within the crop piles. For example, some traditional farmers in India mix their crops with neem leaves, dried kiwis, garlic cloves, eggs, lime powder, sand, castor bean powder, ginger powder, and basil, etc. And they can also fumigate crops with leaves of neem and other repellent plants. You can review the paper of Prakash for these methods. Wood ash is also used to repel pests during storage. Crops like maize or dried fruit or vegetables can be hung onto the roof of ship or cellar. As you see uh, in photos, there are some uh, dried uh, vegetables and fruits. Warehouses may be on slip, having this to avoid climbing of pest animals. You can also see some photos. Some wooden cribs or stacks are elevated by putting stones under them such that cats can sit there and hunt for rats. You can also review this in Tetum Kayak uh, paper. Underground pits are also used for storage. Growing tubers and bulk plants such as potato and onions into soil is also common practice. As well as traditional processed food can be also buried under the soil, like butter and peas. Besides, they can be stored in caves, like potato storage in caves in central Anatolia. You see a, a photo from nature. For short-term storage, storage in the field on the ground is also possible. Not only human food, but also animal fodder is stored using a similar structure. Here you see an old abandoned stone barn. The roof is collapsed, collapsed and uh, this is for hay storage adjacent to a house. There are also examples of above ground fodder storage. All these traditional structures were designed according to available construction materials such as wood, stone, mud or bamboo and environmental conditions are important such as humidity, temperature and pest. In these traditional constructions, food were stored in different containers. For example, in Anatolia, women stored liquids in earthenware, as you can see, terracotta or in other words, bottle gourd shells and pinnate copper whereas dry food sto uh, stuff was stored in wooden boxes and these urchin were jars and such. You can review all of them in Feigen and Ilban's paper. Animal skin and stomach are also used for storage. It's not so different in the uh, ancient cultures also. In the Anatolian Civilization Museum, you can see very large terracotta for storage, especially amphoras, for liquids like olive oil and wine in very giant jars. Threshing, hulling, grinding and sifting of grain, peeling vegetables, fruits, and shelling nuts and peas, pounding, sorting to soften food materials are the oldest techniques in uh, food preparation in terms of getting rid of undigested parts of the food. Here you see traditional animal food threshing tool, hay fork for spooling, stone hand milling for grinding and wooden sieve for sifting grain. An interesting traditional method to ease spooling and grinding maize, that is corn, is mixtalization. 
İngiliz Tıp Bay Ancient Mesa Americanus e, Civilization that could make in alkaline solutions such as slated lime, lye or soda ash. It easily separated and digested, and digested fast. Alkaline cooking is also increased the protein content and nutrient availability of maize, especially niacin. At this point, we come to cooking. It is maybe the first and still the most important invention in human evolution. As said before, humans evolved to eat cooked food. Cooking is both preparation and preservation method. Cooking makes food more digestible, destroys pathogens, denaturates some toxins, transforms inedible sources into edible food, and develops flavors. Cooking or application of heat is the first step of many food preservation techniques. Cooking is classified into three main methods according to the type of the heat transfer. Dry heat cooking, moist heat cooking, and mixed cooking. Here you see a table summarizing traditional cooking methods. Dry heat cooking examples are grilling, broiling, roasting and baking, sautéing, frying in pan, in shallow pan or in deep uh, pan, moist heat cooking technique, boiling, simmering, poaching and steaming, mixed technique, braising, stewing, and there are also a fourth class modern method, microwave, infrared, and vacuum heating. There are some interesting cooking methods. In cooking methods, uh, you can see some photos here. There are some examples from Turkey. Cooking meat in a slow furnace, which is called tandır, or in pit ovens. Using steaming clay pot for cooking in these ovens. Cooking pilav, cooking yufka, it's a flat bread on metal plate known as set. Flat bread making and sharing culture is the represent is in the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity of UNESCO. Please refer to the given re reference website. Making yufka is also a combined food preservation method. C cooking and dry storage make yufka durable for a long time. Another interesting traditional dish is perpetual stew. Also called forever soup or perpetual soup was a popular medieval European food served in inns or old hotels. Continuous heating of the stew is a preservation method that prevents spoilage. Here you see a modern perpetual stew from a restaurant in Bangkok where the stew has been kept and served for nearly 50 years. Heat preserves the food by killing pathogens, spoilage organisms and self-destroying enzymes of the food. Indeed, microorganisms utilize food via their own enzymes. Enzymes work at best at specific temperature, pH, acidic to alkaline, that is base, and ionic range, that is salt range and are denaturated or they lose the activity or their activity is reduced when kept out of these ranges. Usually conditions around room temperature, natural pH and concentration close to saline solutions for cell culture are suitable, suitable for spoilage. So changing these conditions helps to preserve the food. Cooling, which reduces enzyme activity to a lower range, is another preservation method. Cooling and or freezing are used very widely today, but they were also used in the past. Remember that food salads and crisps were placed in relatively cool places. 
such as wood pellets underground. Cold caves were used as food pellets. Some food was buried in the soil during winter. Inuit who live in the Arctic quickly froze the skis with vegetables into buckets of uh, ice and froze them for future use. In suitable cases, ice collecting or cutting was a special practice in the past. Before refrigerators became so widely used, the ice trade was an important sector. Till the early 20th century, ice was cut from lakes and shipped to many places of the world to be used in the meat, vegetable and fish sectors and facilitated the spread of new food products throughout the world. There are still traditional uses of ice snow in Turkey. For example, in some rural places, snow is collected from mountains and deposited in big pits. In summer, these snow deposits are used as a water source and for making cold drinks and desserts. Some of these deserts have been designated as geographical indications, such as Nazilli Snow Halla and Adana Gigigigi Desert. Another very simple snow desert is Karsambaş. Clean snow is taken and tekmez is poured on it. Tekmez is very well known Turkish molasses like syrup usually made from grapes. Availability of oxygen is required for many self-destruction mechanisms in food chemistry and for the action of various microorganisms on the food. Burying in soil, covering the food with oil or fat, coating the food in a liquid, tightly packaging it in vacuum are some old techniques to conserve food. Also, light trigger free radical oxidative degradation of oils and fats and result in result in rancidity. For example, in Ireland and Scotland, butter in wooden containers called bog butter was found in bur uh, was found buried in peat bogs ages for centuries. Preserved butter by burying in the peat box, which have low temperature and oxygen and away from light, was a common practice even before the Middle Ages in Scotland. Burying cheeses into soil is also a common traditional practice in Turkey. For example, when cheeses like küt peyniri or küpecik or one otlu cheeses are prepared, they are pressed into an earthenware jar such that no air bubbles are left. Then they are sealed with a clay and buried upside down in soil or sand. In this way, cheeses are protected from air and sunlight and keep cool in the right humidity. These conditions result in appropriate aging of these cheeses and result in a specific flavor. You can see some examples of these cheeses. As said before, both traditional and modern food preservation techniques usually consist of a combination of various methods. So, a combination of cooking and avoiding air is used in many traditional preservation and preparation methods, such as potting, confit, gelling, and canning. Potting and confit are usually applied to meats. In general, potting and confit are similar in that cooking meat with salt and it is placed in, uh, in an earthenware and covered with hot fat. Solidified fat protects meat from air as well as pro provides a barrier to microorganisms. Similarly, some foodstuffs may be protected from air by covering their surface, surface or preserving them in vegetable oil, such as olive oil and sesame oil. But like canning, there is a serious risk of growth of the anaerobic pathogen Colostridium botulinum, especially in low acid food. For, steriliza for sterilization, salting, increasing acidity, example is adding vinegar, and refrigeration is necessary for long-term storage.
similar traditional application in tertiary is kavurma. The meat is cut into small pieces and fried or sauteed with tallow and salt. Tallow is uh, animal fat. After that, the meat is pressed tightly in an earthen pot and covered with the remaining hot tallow. Kavurma is stored in a cool place and eaten throughout the winter. Some materials form gels when soaked in water and solidify afterwards. Starch, agar, gelatin are the best examples for this uh, material. Food materials can be stored in gels. When cooked, collagen rich parts of an animal flesh form a gelatin. Aspic is a traditional form of meat cut off, preserved in a jelly consisting of gelatin and meat broth. Fruits are also preserved as jellies. We will talk them later in the figuring uh, topic. Canning is a more recent invention. It's a combination of various techniques, namely cooking and avoiding oxygen. Adjusting cake and using some additives can also be included depending on the food product. Canning was uh, invented by Nicolas Appert in the 18th century. Canning involves filling a can or a jar by putting solid food content combined with a liquid, stirring and sterilizing it uh, via boiling to kill microorganisms. Modern canning method makes use of pressure cooker to reach higher temperatures and minimize cooking times. So nutrient loss due to prolonged heat application is reduced. If not done properly, especially homemade canning of non-acidic food may result in foodborne illnesses as said before, Clostridium botulinum may grow in these foods. Another important invention based on heat application is pasteurization, which was developed by Louis Pasteur in 1960 for preventing souring of wine. Pasteurization today is mainly used for liquid foods, especially for meat. Classically, pasteurization aims, uh, aims at killing the most heat-tolerant pathogen bacteria, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. By heating milk in a batch process at 63 centigrade for about 30 minutes. Pasteurization kills all pathogenic bacteria but not spores of other microorganisms. So immediately after pasteurization, milk should be kept in the refrigerator to prevent spoilage and should be consumed in a few days.